Representative Brady, you rightly said it's no time for the Fed to go wobbly. Um, that's what should happen. What do you think is going to happen? And how do we ensure that the Fed actually maintains its commitment to bringing down inflation? You know, I think how they act here in the next month or two is going to be really important. If the market uh, frightens them off, uh, I think that's a problem. Um, I, I was pleasantly surprised that, that the chairman is taking, I think, a stronger approach here because, again, we de it was delayed so long. We're in this pickle right now. So um, I think it's important for them to, to sort of fight their way through this here over the next several months. Let's watch where this data takes us. I still think this worker shortage is a, a major issue. That's why I think we see conflicting jobs numbers versus um, the inflation and the economic growth, which is shrinking. Uh, and I think there's still a lot of people who are eager you know, to, to hire workers. We, we just don't have the people we need. And so I think the Fed can continue this role. And I think hiring may continue strong just because there is such still a need for workers up and down the assembly line, delivery, servicing. Every It's, it's one of the drivers of inflation. I think they've got to address it. So you mentioned rightly the labor market. Um, Joe mentioned the supply side. Supply chains are being redesigned. Globalization is changing. That is high. What else could be done today to help the Fed? Because the Fed can't address all these issues. So what should we look for from Congress and the administration on, on the whole list of other things that we need done? Yeah, I think three things. One, uh, stop feeding inflation. I really do think both uh, the student loan forgiveness uh, and this climate bill will either feed inflation or keep it high. Secondly, you've got to focus on workers. And of the $4 trillion that the president has approved over and above the budget, I don't think there's a dime yet to actually reconnect workers to that workforce in any uh, meaningful way. Thirdly, in this last climate bill, there was about $350 billion of taxes on made in America manufacturing and small businesses, although that one is set off for a few years, I, I would go the opposite direction. I would lock in expensing so the businesses can write off all that new equipment um, and technology they need. I would make sure our research and development credit is full. So I would make some changes on the tax side that would actually help on the supply side of things. Well, you just described something Arthur Burns described back when he was trying to blame Congress. He said, uh, uh, Congress has been intent on providing additional services to the electorate. And, and that's probably what we're hearing now. Did, did Republicans get snookered on the CHIPS Act because they didn't know Manchin was going to flip-flop and, and then bring in another half a trillion or whatever you want to add? And, and then on top of that, do the student loan, does that pass muster with the courts when it's all said and done, or will it already be too late to stop it by then? Yeah, so in reverse order, um, I don't think it passes muster. I think I, I worry the money will be substantially out the door. I don't know how any president gets a half a trillion dollars, you know, just by signing uh, his signature on an executive order. That makes no sense at all. And the HEROES Act they're using from the 9-11, you know, relief for those who were at war in the National Guard just doesn't seem anywhere close to what we have here today. Secondly, you know, I was disappointed in the CHIPS Act. I think it, it unfortunately uh, did uh, open the door to those tax hikes, uh, which I which I strongly oppose, you know, and I also don't believe the chips industry in America, which is the world leader, by the way, in sales and growing in one of our top exports. I just don't think those subsidies were warranted. All right, we, we got to go. Your your prediction on the House in November and your prediction on the Senate uh, in November. Yeah, very confident about the House. We're taking nothing for granted, but the, the people we've recruited and the issues this president has brought to America is a very cruel economy. I feel good about that, but we're not taking it for granted. I don't know in the Senate. It seems like it's going to be pretty tight state by state.